G'day, Jamie Chapman here for another episode of 3 Minute Histology. Uh, today we're going to be having a look at a little bit more finer detail on the structure of the renal corpuscles. So um, we can see this is a low magnified section. This is a trichrome stain section, so it looks a little bit different to perhaps what you might have seen before. Um, and these round structures here, these are all the renal corpuscles. So we're going to have a look at them in a little bit more detail and work out what's going on with them. So let's start our three minutes. So if we zoom in on one of these renal corpuscles, uh, we can actually have a look at a little bit more detail. So sort of here's the renal corpuscle here. Scattered around, we've got our proximal convoluted tubules. We've got a couple of distal convoluted tubules here. We've got something special going on here called the macula densa, which we'll talk about in a little while. Um, but um, the renal corpuscle is made up of two components. It's made up of a capillary tuft known as the glomerulus, which is um, these sort of loops here, which you can see. So the endothelial cells have their nuclei here. These are fenestrated capillaries, um, and that's part of the glomerular filtration barrier. And the second part of a renal corpuscle is, of course, the Bowman's capsule. And there's two layers to the Bowman's capsule. There's an outer parietal layer, which is made up of these simple squamous uh, cells on the outside. And then on the surface of the uh, glomerulus, we've actually got modified cells called podocytes, which form what's known as the visceral layer of Bowman's capsule. And they're the cells which you sort of see the nuclei on the surface here. So they're known as podocytes because they have little foot processes. They're kind of like interdigitating fingers sort of wrapping around uh, the glomerulus the capillaries, the glomerular capillaries, and then the little spaces between their fingers are the little filtration slits. So together they form part of the glomerular filtration membrane. Now, um, the blood that's um, filtered within the renal corpuscle is carried uh, to the uh, renal corpuscle by the afferent arteriole. It's not shown here, but uh, here we've got our afferent arteriole. And then it's drained by the efferent arteriole, which is usually of a smaller diameter because we've lost most of our volume of blood, so we need to uh, maintain our blood pressure. So the efferent arteriole brings the blood into the glomerulus where it's filtered. Um, the filtered materials enters into the Bowman space, which is this space around here. It then um, goes into the proximal convoluted tubule. What remains behind with the blood that wasn't filtered then is um, returned via the efferent arteriole so it's a little bit of a unique vascular arrangement. Of course, we normally go from an arteriole to a capillary bed to a venule, but here we've gone from an arteriole to a capillary bed to an, another arteriole, then to another capillary bed, which is either going to be the peritubular capillaries, which we find around the proximal and distal convoluted tubules, or uh, the vasa recta, which were found uh, particularly following the loops of Henle. Now this structure here, this is a dense region of nuclei. This is known as the macula densa, and it's part of the juxtaglomerular apparatus, which we'll probably uh, talk about in another video. But basically these are osmoreceptors which are detecting sodium levels within the filtrate that's passing through this uh, distal convoluted tubule. Those are the major features of the renal corpuscle. I hope you found that useful.